I am Dr. Major Pankaj Surange. I am the director of IPSC Pain and Spine Hospitals. So stem cells, when we say stem cells therapy, uh, uh, normally when we uh, talk about the stem cell therapy, that there, there are some cancers uh, like uh, uh, bone cancers or the blood cancers where we do not have any other option available. So in these uh, uh, type of cancers, we have seen a lot of advancement with the stem cell therapy. You must have heard about the bone marrow transplantation or the hemopoietic stem cell transplant. So these are the advancements which just developed have happened in the stem cell therapy. But for other conditions like degenerative conditions of the spine, for the joints, we do not have any much uh, evidence for that till now. But now we, with the advancement in the technologies, what we are harvesting um, technology, uh, development in the harvest, harvestment of the technology, in those, uh, now we are getting the stem cells which are purely harvested and these, these stem cells we can use for other conditions other than the cancer, uh, like in the DDT condition, the spine and the joints. So this is what is advancement, what is happening. So the basic idea we must understand between the repair procedure and the regenerative, main regenerative, that is the, that is the, you are replacing the damaged tissues with the, with the normal tissue. So that is the advancement what we have seen in the last one decade in the stem cell therapy. Whenever any new technology comes, uh, definitely we also face some challenges. Uh, we know that our Indian standards, uh, as per the globally also, everywhere in the medical history, uh, whenever any technology comes for the clinical use, it undergoes multiple, multiple of the uh, uh, research. So these undergoes multiple researches in the form of level 1, uh, level 3 evidence, then level 2 evidence, then level 1 evidence. They undergo some uh, uh, animal studies, then the human studies, and then we see that how effective it is, then we see the how uh, safe it is. Once that is established, then only these therapies or the, the, the cell therapies, they come for the clinical use. So this is similarly, similar thing happened with the stem cell also. It has undergone since many decades has been uh, undergoing some research and then it has come for the uh, clinical use. As I mentioned that any new therapy comes or any, any new treatment comes, the biggest challenge what we face is that a misuse of the treatment, which is, which is what we are also focusing too much. Our government is, is also focusing on that. So that's why we come with the guidelines. So there are some guidelines, some protocols we should to follow. And each society, any any society of the medical society, they have to ensure that they the the doctors the, who are treating these, who are managing patients with these new technologies, they should follow the protocols and the guidelines. If they don't do it, then the entire new technology goes into disrepute. So this is the biggest challenge what we are face. We normally face in India. Uh, because we do not have too much of restrictions over the doctors and uh, uh, what we see in the other Western countries, where they have to follow the protocols very strictly. So that follow of the protocols, following of the protocols is not very strict in India. So that is the biggest challenge what we are facing in India. So stem cells uh, are, uh, we know that for the osteoarthritis, which is the most common form of arthritis all over the world, I will not say only for India, it is everywhere it is the biggest uh, problem. Currently, we have option of physiotherapy, medications. If that don't doesn't work, then the only option is the knee replacement. So that is the kind of spectrum what we have. But now with the stem cell introduction of the stem cells and other regenerative therapies, we are able to repair the, those uh, tissues which are damaged. Now in osteoarthritis, what happens is that there is a cartilage. There is a cartilage between the two bones. So this cartilage basically helps in the movement of the joints and we get a smooth movements. When we move our joints, we have a cartilage in between that is protecting our joints. When the cartilage starts eroding, it starts damage, it starts getting damaged over there. Our bones starts hitting each other and that causes pain. So this is the basic uh, principle of the osteoarthritis. Now what regenerative interventions do is they repair the damaged tissues. So we know that about, we have been using PRP and growth factors since um, almost one decade now. Uh, the disadvantage of these regenerative intervention was it only helps in the repair. It is not creating a normal tissue. But with the introduction of stem cells, now whenever the tissue is damaged, if you inject those stem cells precisely over that damaged tissue, these cells basically converts the, the damaged tissue into normal tissue. So that is the basic difference between the other regenerative therapies and the stem cells. 
so with this we are basically providing the mobility also and we are giving the patient a normal joint also but only problem with this is that we have to look for the osteoarthritis in the early stages these kind of therapies these kind of treatments are only possible if we have a patient who comes in the early stages if it goes to the grade 3 or grade 4 advanced grades where the tissue is not there where the tissue is totally damaged in those conditions obviously we cannot uh, offer these treatments and these should not be done and in those cases then we have to go for the uh, surgical options that is a knee replacement so currently in india uh, in western countries i can say that stem cells are being used for other conditions also for the degenerative conditions of spine for the spine joints other uh, joints also but in india dcg has given only approval for the knee joint so dcg basically has given a good strict uh, criteria also how to select to a patient how to do the procedure so do we have entire guidelines and the protocols available in, in india also for the knee osteoarthritis but the only problem is that we can only do for the knee it is not allowed in india so far for the other joints so ipc is basically uh, is a concept uh, what we have brought um, it's not a i'll not say it's a very new for um, for the world but uh, yes for india uh, pain specialty is a new concept uh, i started my journey as a pain specialist in 2008 when i went to budapest hungary for my super specialization i did my fellowship from there after that i started practicing in india uh, in 2012 i opened a day care setup uh, which was a uh, Uh, five bedded uh, uh, setup where i used to perform interventional procedures that time the awareness was not much about the pain medicine as a specialty uh, we struggled a lot but over a period of time in last one decade especially after in one decade our society has also done lot of work on this lot of research on this and now we can say that india is the first country which is give which has given the super specialty status to the pain medicine so this is what kind of advancement what we have seen in last one year and uh, ipsc as i mentioned that we started with the day care setup then we uh, built up uh, another setup which is a slightly bigger setup in 2021 we opened a hospital now this is a hospital which is of the first of its kind in entire asia which is a pain specialty hospital so in this hospital we are not we are managing pain as a whole as a whole spectrum so if you have patients who come for the Um, who needs a physiotherapy or the rehabilitation we have those facilities here if we have patient who require some uh, surgical interventions we have those facilities over here but our main focus of the ipsc hospital is to focus on the interventional procedures so when i say interventional procedures these are the minimally invasive interventions minimally invasive procedures where we don't have to open the spine we do where we don't have to open the brain to manage their pain but we can do with the less invasive techniques as a day care procedures so that is what ipsc is basically focusing on